satellites. And what's interesting here, so Dan, this is Amazon that is going to be working on a satellite, not Blue Origin, to draw the distinction, with the, which is Jeff Bezos's space company. Yeah, this is this is Amazon, and what this is called is Project Kuiper. It's named after the Kuiper Belt uh, of icy objects out near uh, Neptune's orbit. Just to get really nerdy, uh, and basically what it is is going to be a, a co constellation of low Earth orbit satellites, and they're going to beam broadband uh, internet access to people around the world. Now, Amazon says they will make this uh, a product that consumers can purchase, so this is not. Uh, something that's going to be free or anything along those lines, but it should make internet more accessible to people in remote areas where you don't usually have access to something like that. So they're going to be launching uh, somewhere in the order of between two, uh, 3,000 satellites, I believe. Uh, part of the issue is that when you have so many of these satellites, though, in this low Earth orbit, there's a lot of junk up there. I mean, there is just trash floating around in outer space right now, and it's becoming a big problem. So Amazon says that they will deorbit their satellites once they're done uh, after a certain number of days rather than waiting several years. Uh, and that basically will help uh, eliminate the debris that this causes. Deorbiting, by the way, means it's just going to crash into the atmosphere and burn up. So Dan Halley, when you say people can buy this, you mean they can buy internet service on these things? And why is Amazon doing this? That's a good question. Yes, they're uh, going to be able to buy internet service through this. Uh, but I think part of it is just basically extending the scope of customers that Amazon can reach. Uh, they have AWS. People need internet access to take advantage of AWS services. So that may be part of it. I think it could also just be another source of revenue. Uh, but look, they're going to be sending up these constellations and satellites competing directly with Tesla, which is also, or SpaceX rather, which is also yeah. sending up its own constellation of satellites. So it's kind of a, a booming business that we're seeing here. Uh, and it's another way where we can have this kind of broadband access availability to people throughout the world. Uh, it seems to be more accessible than something like uh, what Google was doing with Project Loon, uh, which is a balloon that goes up and is stationary. Uh, these are just gonna be floating around in space. Dan, th there was a metric we used this week, and I forget where we got it, but 4.5 billion people on the earth have access to the internet, 3.5 billion do not. Is that accurate? Because that would be incredible growth for companies that are trying to reach those clients. Yeah, I mean, look, we think that everybody has internet access uh, in the world, but they don't. They just simply don't have access to it. Uh, a lot of people, believe it or not, uh, when they say they have internet access, it's on their smartphone, a low cost smartphone that has barely their internet access. So Broadband internet is incredibly difficult for a lot of people to have access to. It's either cost prohibitive for them uh, or their location just doesn't allow for internet access to reach them. We're talking about uh, rural areas, mountainous regions, uh, places where uh, wires can't go and satellites may be blocked, right? So uh, these would just beam straight down to earth uh, and perhaps enable uh, a huge amount of the population to get on the internet and it really is something that people need. I mean, the world, I don't know if you know this, operates online now.